This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit OpenTuition. What I want to move on with is process costing, which uh, those of you here will remember is basically two separate problems. So it works quite nicely. We can deal with one of the problems before lunch, hopefully, and the other problem after lunch. Okay? Um, before I do it, in fact, just one thing. I mean, I say, whether well, you remember you don't, there are two separate problems. These are two completely separate examples in front of you. Just one thing, I should have changed the typing on it. It says, write up the process account for the month. I did show you what the tier counts look like uh, on the earlier course, those of you who are here. The chances, though, of being asked anything on the actual tier count these days are tiny. Uh, I am not going to write up tier counts, what's far, perhaps one later, but what's far more important is the numbers. Any questions you get, almost without doubt, will just be asking for costs or something, you know. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Anyway, um, let's just look before lunch at example A. Let me use this to remind you of the problem, the alternative way of costing, and the way we deal with it. In process X, 8,000 units were started during the month. There's something there about losses, which I'll deal with in a second. We actually completed 7,300 units, and we're told the costs incurred during the month. And remember all of you, hello, before we carry on reading, remember the basic idea of process costing is that to get a cost per unit, which is primarily what we're after, forgetting this question for the moment, uh, instead of doing separate cost cards with process costing, the cost per unit, basically we just take the total costs, we divide by the total production. In that sense it's a much easier way of costing Basically, instead of saying, you know, the materials are $5 a unit, the labour is $8 a unit, and so on, the basic idea, how much do we spend in total, how much do we produce in total, and simply divide. Okay? However, the problem, as you remember, the reason it's not that trivial in the exam, is either, as in the first example, we've got these losses, which I'll deal with in a moment, or, the other problem, which we'll deal with after lunch, the second example, is this work in progress business. However, A is losses. Essentially that's what we're after, the total cost divided by total production. How you show your workings in the exam is obviously your choice, but I still think the way we did before is the most efficient to do a little table, uh, sorting out how many units we're making and what the cost is. So I say it's your choice, I don't care how you write it up as long as you get the right figure. And so first of all, how much did we spend during the month, the total cost? Materials we spent 20,000, labour we spent 3,840, and so, in total, we spent 23,840. How many units were we producing? Well, it says in the first line, we actually started work on 8,000 units. Hello? 8,000? And so, at that stage, perhaps we were thinking we'd produce 8,000, you attach the units to materials. We say as soon as we 
buy the materials, that's when we're starting work on our units. And so at that stage, you'd be hoping for 8,000 units at a cost of 23,840. Sorry, Liga, you with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. However, the first thing to remember is although we were working on 8,000 and we're spending that much, we knew from the very beginning that on average some of those units would be lost. It says in the second sentence there's a normal loss of 10%. And remember, a normal loss, I'll write down in one moment, you've no need to, a normal loss is our, an expected loss. The machine's not perfect. On average, we expect to lose 10%. Alright? And therefore, it would be rather stupid to divide the cost by the 8,000 when we know, on average, we're never going to produce 8,000. You build into your costings your normal or expected loss. And although in the exam we'll call it either normal or expected, remember what I mean, it's effectively your average loss. On average, you expect to lose, what is it, 10%? I've walked away. Say again? Yes, 10%. So yes, we expect to lose 800. And therefore, we expect to produce 7200. We'll worry about what actually happened later, but we do our costings on what we expect to happen. Again, we expect to end up with 7,200 units. Agreed? Uh, the one other thing, though, remember, is that although we call it loss, it doesn't always mean that we've sim 800 have sim would simply disappear. It simply means, of the 8,000 we're working on, 800 of them we expect to either disappear or be damaged, you know, not to be proper units. And it tells us here that losses can be sold for a dollar a unit. So although we still use the word loss, here it means we expect 10% to come out damaged as waste. If we can sell it, then any income from that we treat effectively as a negative cost. So here you expect to lose 800, you expect to be able to sell it for a dollar, and we say therefore the net cost of our expected production, 23,840, less the little bit of income you expected of 800, and net 20,000, 23,000 rather, and 40. I will write down in a moment, but your normal, your average, your expected loss, you build into your costings, you do your costings on what you expect to happen. And as a result, we'll cost our units as follows. Twenty-three thousand and forty for seven thousand two hundred units. Please check me. I think it comes to three dollar twenty per unit. All right. In the exam, obviously, only do what's asked. Some questions might simply say, what's the cost per unit? And there it is, 
but I can't say enough times, I'll only say it one more time, when you're doing your costings, you cost it based on the expected, the average, the normal loss. You treat any money we get for the waste, we treat it as a negative cost of production. Okay? Well, although it may stop there, uh, there are two extra things that could be asked. The first is very trivial, or hopefully very trivial, that having uh, worked out a cost of $3.20 per unit, you could be asked to put a value on the completed units. And how many units were completed? Well, we'll deal with the problem with it in a moment, but it does say whatever we expected to happen, it says the actual units completed was 7,300. And therefore the value of them. They'll be valued at $3.20 per unit. If you were simply asked what's the value of the completed units, multiply up and I get... Twenty-three, three sixty. We all happy there. The other thing, though, obviously, they could ask you in various ways, is, of course, how did we manage to get seven three hundred? On our costings, we were expecting seven two hundred to be produced, but I said all along. We'd brought in our normal loss. On average, we expect to lose 10%. And so we've done our costings based on average. But clearly, some months you might lose more than 10%. Some months you might lose less. Agreed? Well, remember, any difference, you know, any extra loss or any lower loss we call abnormal or unexpected. Here, we've got an abnormal or unexpected. Several ways you can get the same figure. Depends on the way the question's given. Uh, one way is this. How many did you actually lose? Uh, yeah, you put in 8,000, you got out 7,300. We actually lost 700. How many did you expect to lose? The normal loss. You expected to lose, was it 800? I've wound forward. And so here, surely, we've actually lost 100 less than average. I said a moment ago, if you lose more than you expect, we call it an abnormal loss. If you lose less, we call it an abnormal gain. Now, I shouldn't need, but I'll write down the other way. It depends on the way the question's given. Before I do that, are we all clear that we effectively gained 100 this month? Next month we may lose 100 more, you know, changes. Alternatively, the other way you could have got the same figure, of course, is what was the actual loss? Oh, I've just done that way, sorry. <laughs> Shit. What other way is there? Oh, sorry. The expected out production... You expected to produce, if you look back to our table, was it 7,200? Hello. Yes, it was. The actual production turned out to be 7,300. And so again, we have an abnormal gain of 100. So sorry, I'm not trying to waste your time. Obviously in the exam, don't mess around. 
either way round we've gained 100 which is faster simply depends on how they give you the information more importantly though remember that whereas any normal loss is in your costings getting the three dollar twenty any abnormal you charge at full cost per unit it's a hundred units full cost per unit was I think three dollar twenty this month we've made a gain of 320 other months clearly we may lose money because of the abnormal again it could be either way around all right all right so that's just about it I say after lunch we'll deal with the other problem and then I'll give you a test with both sets in uh, one other thing here though I mean I don't I think you've got to agree with me the numbers themselves are relatively easy it's just being careful you know as with everything um, quite commonly they have one or two writing ones and although I've said it do do remember that normal losses they are dealt with in our costings they're taken into account in the costings your costings include the average loss you expect to make whereas abnormal losses or gains the extra loss or the lower loss sort of thing abnormal losses or gains are always valued at full cost per unit so I've not said anything new there but as I say it's very very common to have certainly one written just checking that whatever numbers questions they have as well. Okay.